it's about neuroscience, I guess, but um, what it's really thinking about is what's going in our, on in our brains when we're learning. So I talk a little bit about um, the science of learning generally, the psychology of learning, um, and then we kind of split it into a, a model of learning and kind of work at it through that way, so there's sort of a, a process for it. It's really aimed at people who work in training in the real world, uh, they work in learning development, possibly HR, because they often get involved in, in training and learning, even potentially education, because clearly people in education are working with learning as well. Probably not primary education, but certainly I think as you're getting into the more senior and then tertiary education, I think those people might find it useful as well. Challenges are around defining neuroscience in the first place. What do we mean by it? Lots of different opinions as to what that means. Um, and neuroscientists might disagree with people who use it in a more generic um, sense. So that's one challenge. There are challenges around the, the scientificness of it, that not everybody understands how to read a scientific paper. So if you're trying to access genuine research, it can be a real struggle to get to grips with what that means. One of the other things is a lot of neuroscience isn't actually that relevant to real world training. So lots of psychology studies and neuroscience studies are done in very, very specific circumstances. Very few of which are based around real life work, training at work. So I think there's that whole taking really complex stuff and trying to apply it to what you're doing in a real world context. I think it's really important when you're looking at neuroscience research that you kind of ask sensible questions about its validity, I guess. Um, and there are, there are a set of useful questions that it's really useful to have in your, in your head, I guess, when you're talking to people. Um, and I have got them in the book, so that might be useful for people. Um, so who's done the research? You know, was it a reputable university or was it Joe Bloggs down the road? Um, when did they do the research? So was it done, you know, is it recent? Is it groundbreaking? Or was it done a long time ago? And just because it was done a long time ago doesn't mean it's poor. It could be something that's been really useful and people have built on it. Or it could be that it was a piece of research that's been refuted since then. So I think when's important. Um, the people who did it, the organisation, the, the individuals, have they got vested interests? So if they've got vested interests and it's just a piece of research that proves that their product is the best, there may be something in that, it might still be valid, but it's worth checking. Um, how was it done? So was it done using double blind trials? You know, is it a genuine scientific piece of research or is it a survey piece of research as opposed to a scientific type research? And I think one of the other things to really get clear about is what are the results saying? So if it's saying that this piece of evidence is the magic bullet and it's gonna solve all your problems, that's probably not really a very valid piece of research. It, it might be fun, but it's not necessarily going to be really ground, um, really groundbreaking and useful. So it's asking all those, you know, a combination of all those questions. And if you get good answers to all of them, you've probably got something fairly solid in front of you.